sounds too national. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to open in prayer, and then we will move forward. Jesus, you are good, and uh, we trust you, Father, with uh, what you put before us. And Lord, it's a, um, it's a wonderful thing to be called to your work. And uh, Father, I, I count it a privilege to be uh, trusted with your children. Lord, you, you love them, you have brought them to hear about you, to have your word implanted in their hearts. And God, we just want to give this time of training to you. And we want to pray for those who are here in the room and those who will be watching this online uh, because they're already serving in some other part of this ministry this morning. God, we want to just ask you for your favor and ask you for your, your, your blessing, Lord, you take our little bits of time and ability to magnify them, use it by your spirit to change lives. And we ask that you do that through us, through one. Thank you for this ministry um, here at the church, and we thank you for this ministry uh, globally. An astounding number of Awana clubs all around the world are um, probably already in session for getting started playing. And we just thank you for what you're doing for them and for the power of your word. We love you. We give you this time to ask that you. All right. Hi, welcome. Um, name badges, coffee, and lots to eat. So <laughs> fill thyself. Um, good. Thank you for coming. Um, hi, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Um, there's, uh, if you wouldn't mind wearing a name badge, there's coffee and juice and food. So feel free to help yourself. Um, okay, so while you guys are getting settled, Awana. Awana is a weird word. And before I took the job of a WANA commander, which sounds so imposing, it's totally not. Uh, but before I took the job, um, I didn't know what a WANA was. I thought a WANA stood was like the hometown of some Midwestern church that, you know, like a WANA Idaho or a WANA Ohio, where this ministry had started, or maybe a, a city in the mountains in Missouri where there was a camp. Like, it just sounded like. Small town in West Ham. Um, uh, but I discovered that, oh, sir, I'm sorry, I put the leftover pan here. Um, but I came to discover that it's an acronym. Um, and 2 Timothy 2.15, did anybody bring a Bible with them today? Christina, would you read 2 Timothy 2.15? Okay, it's okay, we're all waiting on you. Second Timothy two fifteen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Right. So do your best to to anchor yourself in the word of God. And I love the I love the uh, exhortation there that you can I think a lot of times people try to work or serve or do something for the body of Christ because we know we're supposed to. Uh, but your activity and your action and your motivation comes from your own flesh desiring to be good before your father, right? And it's, hey, daddy, did you see me, what I'm doing? Hey, daddy, look, right? And it comes from that motivation. And when that's the source of your motivation, you get tired and frustrated and you burn out because you're not enough. Um, children's ministry is a lot of work. If you were to serve in the children's ministry on Sunday mornings, they are trying to move to the, to the place where you serve for a small number of months, and you get that same amount of time off, and then you come back for that small number of months. They're not there yet because they don't have enough people, but that's the plan. Awana, we don't, we don't take our break like that. We work for nine months solid every Sunday. And then you get three months off, and then hopefully you come back. Maybe you don't. Um, but you commit to nine months. So it's, I'm not going to tell you it's, it's easy, because it's not. And if you try to do any children's ministry out of your own sense of daddy look, you'll get frustrated and tired and burn out, and you'll send me an email in six weeks and say, it was fun. Bless you as you move forward. <laughs> I'm not. Right? And that's just reality. So, hi, welcome. Um, 
coffee and juice and fruit and fill up. Have fun. Um, so we want to make sure that we're doing um, what Scripture invites us to do in 2 Timothy 2.15, that we set our anchor in the Word of God, and that we see our work as workmen, not as workmen for, hey, Daddy, look, are you checking off my chore chart? Right? Because that's not how Scripture presents service. Right? We want to anchor ourselves in the Word of God and uh, find our strength and our motivation and our empowerment in, in Jesus and His Word. And Awana is all about the Bible. There are other youth clubs, right? There's there's Boy Scouting and Girl Scouting. On the Christian side of things, there's there's Trail Life and there's uh, Pioneer Girls and there's um, well, what's the Assemblies of God one? Uh, that's really cool. Um, blinking. But anyway, huh? No, no, no. There's an Assemblies of God Scouting organization. That's really cool. And I'll think of it later. Anyway, <laughs> there's lots of these clubs. And if you just want to do clubs where kids wear a uniform and go through a handbook, you could you could take your pick. There's lots. But in Awana, it's a club. They wear a uniform and they go through their handbook and they get their ranks and their badges and their buttons and their stars and their stuff. But it's every single thing is about scripture. And that's why I love Awana, because not tying can save your life physically if you're hanging from the side of a cliff. And so teach kids to tie knots. It's great. But knowing the word of God will save your life eternally every moment of your day. Um, and so it is massively important that they know scripture. Um, and if you look at the statistics of, of uh, what happens to church kids, it breaks my heart. And I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but kids who are raised in church, who go to Sunday school and go to youth group, and then move out of mom and dad's house and probably move to another town if they go to college, right? Seven out of 10 of those kids don't find a church when they get to their new hometown. Now, I'm not saying that that means that 70% of the kids lose their salvation. I do not believe that you can lose your salvation. I am not of that school of thought. But what that may mean is that 70% of the kids were never saved and that it was just their parents' culture being forced upon them while they didn't have a choice. Right? Now, so if you follow that, that same group of, of 10 kids, three of them find a church when they go to the new town and when they set up their own life. Seven of them do not. Four of those seven will never go back to church. Three of those seven who left will, by the time they turn 25, so after they get through college and make all of their young adult mistakes and bump their noses and have baggage, right? When they turn 25, by that point, three of them have come back to church. So four of them go away and stay away. And so, it, I mean, I can't, can't tell you how important it is that our kids that they don't have their parents' faith, right? That they have their own faith. And that they know the Word of God. And the only thing that saves a kid is not their parents saying, Johnny, you need to go to church today. What saves a kid is the same thing that saves an adult. It's the Bible and the Holy Spirit writing another word. And that's what saves them. Awana has done its own longitudinal studies. <laughs> Sorry, I really love this ministry. Awana has done its own longitudinal studies. And kids who start in Awana at, at any age and go through six years of Awana, Awana can go from the time you're four to the time you graduate high school. We don't have that long of an Awana program. Ours is done when you, go to, when you graduate sixth grade. But if you go to six years of Awana, you fell into this group that they called the, uh, what word did they use? It wasn't indoctrinated, because that sounds too culty, but it was like <laughs> qualified. I think it was qualified Awana students that had, that had not just come a little bit, but that had gone through six years of Awana somewhere, right? Qualified. And then they followed those kids when they graduated high school. 93% of them, when they left high school and moved on to their own adult life, now in church. So... The difference is amazing, and I'm not here to knock normal Sunday school. We need normal Sunday school, right? But this is like the Green Beret of Sunday school, okay? This is the Navy Seals of Sunday school. 
because you are not allowed to just sit and um, breathe and everybody thinks you're fine, right? Because if your little cluster of awards doesn't grow, you're going to feel pretty silly because all of your friends every week come back with more bleep. Right? <laughs> and you still just have the little, I belong to Sparky's badge. And you're like, no, you still belong to Sparky's. But, but there's, there's a lot of very positive peer pressure. Oh, you didn't get anything signed off this week? Honey, what happened? What's, can, we, can we work with you? Can we, here, we've got 30 minutes of handbook time right now. Let's go over here and let's get something signed off, right? And so, um, there's a lot of positive peer pressure, and they do it initially because they want the blame, right? <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But as they go on, they do it not because they want the blame, but because they, they start to discover the value of the Word of God, right? So, if I can make it through this, it'd be good. <laughs> it's about Scripture. It's, it's about Scripture. So, we do a lot of fun things. Uh, Awana does games. Awana does, uh, we haven't participated in yet, but Awana even has like the Grand Prix. The, uh, it's like a Pinewood Derby, right? That Boy Scouting does, and it gives the kid a chance to build something with usually dad, um, and father-child time is really important. Um, so we, we, this club has never done that. We may this year if I can get it together. Um, there's also the uh, Awana Olympics, where we practice our games and then we compete against another Wana club that practices their games. Like that can happen. That's never happened at this club before. There are other clubs that have like opened up the challenge. We're good at our games. <laughs> Bring it, right? Um, so we may take that up. Um, there's lots of fun, but at the heart of Awana is learning the word of God. And here's another amazing thing. If a child goes through um, the entire WANA program, which again, we don't have the high school and junior high pieces yet. If they were if they were to go through the whole thing, all 10 years that's available, they would, no, it's not 10, it's like 12 years, 14 years, 14 years of WANA that's available. If they were to go through all of it, um, they would learn near nearly 3,000 scriptures. We don't have the youngest and the biggest. If they were to go through everything that we offer, beginning of Covey through the end of TNT, they would learn 1,400 verses of the Bible. 1,400 verses of the Bible. Do you know what an incredible power source that is for the rest of their life? Right? That when life gets hard, they're like, oh, no, no. The Holy Spirit has always put that in my heart. <laughs> right? So um, that's why we're here. We are not here as child care. If anybody ever re references... Awana as child care, I have a really hard time not slapping them. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is working on me. Yes. <laughs> child care is throw the kids in the gym, shut the doors, and hope no one gets hurt. That's child care, right? Um, we are not about that. People bring us their kids who don't even go to this church. There are parents who don't go here but they see the value in the Word of God, and they come and they pay the enrollment fee, and they give us their children, and their children learn the Word of God, and they go on a date, uh huh, yeah. and come back, and they have a regular date night, and we're there not child care. We are there instructing their child in the Word of God, and it gives them time to work on their marriage. Praise the Lord, right? There are, and, and so we we are not childcare. We are boot camp for life in the Bible, right? So that's why we do this. Approved workmen are not ashamed. Um, if you know who you are and you know your power source and you know why you're doing this, if you can put up with the fact that it's hard and it's long and it's nine months without a break. Okay, well, it's not without a break. You take We take three weeks off in December. We take a week, we, we don't even try on Mother's Day because 90% of the people that help are mothers, and I'm not going to tell you that they can't celebrate Mother's Day with your family. Um, and so, yeah, we, there, we, take, we take small breaks, but nothing significant. 
Um, so you are signing up for nine whole months of work. Okay, well, we covered that. Um, what do we do in Awana? A couple of you have done this before. Um, there's a lot of new people that have not. So I'm going to go through everything starting from the ground, okay? Okay. You need to, uh, you need to be here at 5 p.m. Okay, there you go. You need to be here at 5 p.m. on a Sunday for setup. Um, Emily and I will be here 10 minutes before that. Um, I'm going to make sure all the rooms are unlocked and the air conditioning is turned off. Um, you get here at 5. And there are plastic tubs like this one that has currently all of my registration shrapnel in it. But anyway, you'll have plastic tubs like this that have what you need for your room. Um, and I will have unlocked the Awana locker um, in case you don't know where that is. Of course, you don't know where that is. Um, on the back side of the gym, between the gym and, and the shop, there's a little walkway that goes between the gym and the shop. Um, and you can either come in from that side or you can go through the gym and out the back little side doors by the men's bath, by the ladies' bathroom. And then right outside that door, there's stairs that go up to the MPR. Under the stairs is a large storage closet. That's the whole understairs area. That's the Iwana locker. That is, that is our universe. Okay. Um, I will make sure that that is unlocked and the door is open. So you'll get here at five. You'll go grab the tubs that belong to you for your age group, okay, and whatever that is. And you will schlep them, God bless you, uh, to your classrooms, okay? And I should write on here when, where the classrooms are. So I will do that. Um, uh, cubbies are in room 103. That's Miss Kahuna Hana's classroom, in case you're familiar with that. Um, Sparkies are in, I'm sorry, that's not right. Sparkies are in 103. Cubbies are in 1056, the huge room, first floor. Okay. TNT is in 2056, the huge room upstairs. Okay. So that's where they are. You'll take your stuff, you'll set up your domain. Um, there's not like a lot of setup in the room stuff required except cubbies. The little ones have stuff, man. They've got puppets. They've got all the stuff. So, cubbies, you're carrying more boxes than the other people, and you have a little more work to do before having other people, because little kids, little kids don't just sit in chairs. Right? Yeah. yeah, there you go. So, um, you're setting up your room from five to just before five thirty. Uh, by like five twenty, five twenty-five, you need to be back down in the gym, and your room is ready to go. Kids start arriving before. Um, we are we are not going to let kids in the gym before 5.25. In the past, some of the drop-off and leave parents started dropping off their kids sooner and sooner and sooner because they're using this as date night. And we knew that they were. And marriage needs dates. So I didn't say, hey, what are you doing? Um, so, but... What that did is it forced us who were getting the gym ready, the game crew, and uh, that was getting the, the gym ready, had to be ready at 515, had to be ready at 510, had to, no, it's not fair. So we're going to hold them outside till 525, and it starts at 530. Church, if they're going to church, doesn't start till 6. So there's no reason to be like chomping up the bed, come on, I need to go get to see. So we're going to hold them outside till 525. At 525, we'll open the doors, kids start pouring in. In the past, we did not direct the 15 minutes before opening when it's the arrival time. It was mayhem. Um, and the game stuff was out, and kids were just. <laughs> and what that. Not normal. Right. But we found that the. <laughs> for 15 minutes beforehand um, set their mental attitude for what's going to happen next. So this year, we're going to open the doors, and game crew is going to be ready to play games right away. And, the, and it's going to be some kind of game that can be inclusive as people come in, but it's structured. Okay, so the, uh, the arrival time happens until 540. 
We know that not everybody is there smack on time. So 5.25 to 5.40, kids are walking in, check-in is happening. Um, and then at 5.40, we start. We do the Iwana Pledge. We um, do the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of America because it's we, we part of being a Christian is being a citizen, and we, we want to support that as well. Um, so we do those pledges, um, and then we pray, and then we sing. Um, and this whole opening window of time is only 10 minutes long, okay? Um, and we, we, deal, we do still get people who just walked in the door, and we're doing the want to pledge, and they're like, yeah, yeah right? Um, so that happens, but we try to start right on time at 540, um, a want to pledge, American flag pledge, opening prayer, uh, and then worship. And in the past, I tried to manage the worship part, but I've got my brain in so many places, I'll be honest, it's a bad job. And so, praise Jesus, we have somebody who has stepped in for that. Um, and so, at 5.50, the en masse, all humans in the gym stage is over. Hi, bless you, come on in. Um, at 5.50, that's over. And we go into three 30-minute blocks. And so... Um, 5.50 to 6.20 is the first block, 6.20 to 6.50 is the second block, 6.50 to 7.20 is the third block. And the different clubs are doing different things during those blocks. Okay, so everybody is in the gym until 5.50, and then they scatter. So um, cubbies um, at, at 5.50, and I changed this order a little bit. The cubbies were initially the first play, and then we asked them to not play. Right for an hour. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> I should have known better. So so now the cubbies will do the opening and then go into council time. So council time, just so you can decode what these things mean. Council is the time when we teach and there is a Bible lesson. Okay? So um, the curriculum for council time is provided by Awana. You don't have to come up with your own lesson. Okay? Um, there is a there is a bound book of Awana lessons, and it goes about um, it's a I think it's two years of lessons. So and then you would just start again, right? And the kids that have been in the same club for more than two years will start to hear the same lessons, but that's okay. Um, you're two years more mature. You'll hear it at a different level. Somebody else will be teaching it, um, and it's okay to hear the same thing twice. So um, you don't have to come up with your own lesson plans. Um, and the job description of leader is the person who will take turns in council time. So the council person, it will be, uh, I, I'm hoping to have two leaders in every age group. Um, and so you would take turns, I'll, I'll teach, and you can work it out with your other leader. Do you want to take a week, 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 or do you want to do I'll teach a month and then I'll take a break for a month? And how, you work it out, I'm not going to micromanage that. Um, but you rotate through. The, the uh, council time, so I'm just going to follow Cubbies and explain all of these. So council, they come in. Now in Cubbies, it's not 30 minutes of talking head because that will blow up. Um, <laughs> but, but there's 30 minutes of, of instructional time, and that includes some additional singing because Cubbies love to sing and dance, right? Um, and then that includes um, an ongoing soap opera with puppets, okay? Um, there are four puppet characters in the in the Cubby curriculum, and they learn and grow and teach each other and talk and go through stories, and the scripts are provided, and there is a puppet stage down in the room. So you get behind the puppet stage, you back out a show, and the kids are excited, right? Um, don't just read the script five minutes before, like, while you're sitting up the room. Please know what's happening. Please know what's happening. So you're like, oh, and you can put some drama in, and you're like, Johnny, I'm so sorry. I mean, oh, you know, like, okay. <laughs> These are kids, have fun. Okay. Um, and then there is a little bit of directed instruction for cubbies, for cubbies, where they need to just sit and listen, but it's only like 10 minutes or less or less, okay? Um, so council time, that's council time. For the older groups, it is more of a Sunday school classroom sort of feeling or a classroom sort of feeling, and that's okay. Um, we can help them with that. Um, and then cubbies will go to games in the next block. 
Um, Sparky started in games, and TNT also started in council. So TNT and Cubbies will be in the directed instruction time during the first block. Sparkies will be playing in the gym. Okay. Game time happens for Cubbies in the next block. Game time in the gym is the game director, which is Trevor Lidge. And uh, he has uh, a youth or two um, that are going to help him with this. Okay. And God bless him, they are dead tired at the end of the night because game team is responsible from 725 to 740. And then game team gets a 10 minute break while we sing. And then they're on and on and on and on, right? So God bless them. Um, but they play games and they get the kids run around. Drop dead tired is the goal, right? Um, so that by the end of it, they are ready to sit down again. Right, and they've had a good time. Game time is not scripture, but game time is why some kids come, right? And and it's totally fine to chum with something fun to reel them in and then stick the word of God in their brain. Like I'm okay with that. It's not bait and switch. Well, maybe it is, but it's okay. It's okay, right? So game time is just awesome fun, um, and so that happens for 30 minutes for cubbies. And then during that same block, Sparkies, who just played, are going to do council time. Okay? Um, and so Sparkies is, oh, I should go to the age groups. Cubbies are three years old and potty trained. We do not take them until the potty trained part happens. Okay? If that's still a struggle, stay in the nursery. Okay? Um, three years old and potty trained um, until they have gone to kindergarten. So some kids enter kindergarten early, some kids enter kindergarten late. So when a, a young child is in cubbies, they could be in cubbies for three years. If mom and dad decide to enter them in kindergarten later, they might be in cubbies again, right? But we we start cubby, we start uh, Sparks when they start kindergarten, okay? So Sparks is K12, and then TNT is three, four, five, six. So that's the age groups. Um, it, at this church, um, Cubbies is our smallest club. Cubbies has on a night 15, 12, 15 on a night is normal Cubby population. Sparks is much bigger. Sparks is like uh, 27, 30 on a night. Okay, and TNT is the giant. TNT is 45 or so. Okay. So on a full night, we're pushing 100 people. We're, we're 90 something people. Okay, on a full. Um, so that's uh, that's game time. Then the third block, 6:50 to 7:20, is handbook for cubbies. Um, handbook time is when the kids come to you and say, "Look, look, look! look I memorized these three verses over the course of the week." Okay. Now, in the past, we have allowed handbook time to be. Um, Sort of like popcorn assistants, where the kids are at their desks, and when they're ready, they say, and then one of the listeners comes by and says, yes. And they say, I learned Romans 5.1. And they say it. And you go, good job. And you sign it off, and you move on to the next raised hand. That worked, but it doesn't build relationship. So this year, we're going to do it differently. You will have your little tribe. Okay. So when, when we have all the kids signed up, it's going to take a couple weeks to know who we have because everybody's going to be trickling in. But we will develop your little tribe. Okay, so you'll have your eight, your six, your however many it winds up being kids. Okay, and they will have, now for the older two groups, they will be all scattered all over the place, learning at different rates. And some will have two things signed off at night. Some, things, some kids will do five or six signed off at night. Just depends on what, how motivated the child is, right, and how on board the parents are, and all that kind of stuff. But you'll be you'll be at different points in different books with different kids. With Cubbies, it's more of a march through the book because the lessons that Cubbies teaches goes with um, a particular section in their Cubbies book, and the goal for them that week is to memorize this verse. Right? They're young; they're not going to do seven verses a week. Okay, um, so. If you're a Cubbies listener, you're going to be working with the kids until they can say their verse. 
and they can't read, and they're not yet at the old at the age where they're used to homework. Mm -hmm. So they probably won't come to you that night having already learned the verse. Maybe they did. God bless them. But it's more likely going to be you work with them until they can say the verse, right? And then you celebrate and sign off in their book. Okay, so that's handbook time. You'll have your little tribe of kids. The kids will have things to show you. You will say, yes, you did, high five, good job, or no, sweetheart, you missed this person, this part, you forgot this word. And Awanas does require perfection, okay? So do not give too much grace. The awards don't mean anything if you can sloth through it, okay? So it needs to be perfect. If, if the verse is, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, and they tell you um, those who are in Jesus don't get condemned. No, I'm sorry. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then they have to know the address, right? So it has to be perfect. The question is probably in which translation, yes. right? Um, Awanas produces their material in either Old King Jimmy, New King Jimmy, or NASB. Those are the three options from them. We, I inherited um, New King James. Everything that, I, that we owned when I took the job was King James. And rather than buying entirely new inventory, we are just continuing with that. So it's all New King James. So if they, if, um, and they don't have to own a King James Bible, a New King James Bible to do it because all the verses are printed the way they should memorize it in their books. Okay, so they memorize off the page. They memorize off the page. I had one kid last year in TNT who their whole family is ESV. Ours is too, my whole family is ESV too. Um, and they wanted to memorize in the, ES, in the ESV. And I said, you know what? Just for unison, so that at sometimes during a one of Bible quizzing, when when we all need to be able to say the same verse at the same time, you need to you need to do these verses in King James, and that's okay. You know, it's fine. Memorize what's on the page. It is still the Word of God. Okay, it's fine. So um, that's handbook time. Um, after these three blocks, the three ages have rotated through those three things in different steps, right? So T and T, the older kids. We ask them after the pledges and after the singing to come in and sit down and sit. And that's okay, they're old enough to do that. Um, so they come in and go straight to council, and then they move, move straight to handbook, and then they have sat um, and been on task for an hour, then we let them go wild at the end, okay? So that's the, that's the TNT thing. Um, then at 7.20, everybody comes back to the gym. TNT's already there. Sparks and Cubbies come back to the gym. And we do our closing ceremony. And we, uh, oh, oh, during game time, they're in teams, color teams, red, yellow, green, blue. And the teams compete in the games, okay? Um, and we try to have everybody always on the same color team, at least for a semester, when we shuffle it again. But there are kids who are absent, and there are kids who are new, and it's hard to be, like, really rigid about that. But what you can do is like line your, you know, sort it out for the game director so the game director doesn't have to do it. When you're on your way down to games, have them line up by color. And you can just look at it and be like, oh, we've got 14 reds and three blues. Well, that's going to be a bummer. And just tell people, God bless you. Tonight you're blue. Come over. Okay, that's fine. And, and help the great game director with that. So then you can go down to the gym and the game director can just say yellow, blue, green, and blue. Okay? There's points. They win points. And it's not like Little League where everybody gets a trophy. They win points, right? Okay. And the, the team with the most points at the end of the night gets to eat their snack first. <laughs> You'll be amazed at how much they want to be the first one to eat the snack. They don't get more carrots than someone else, but they get theirs first. <laughs> and that's a huge deal. So I don't have to give trophies and ribbons. I just say, tonight, the Sparkies. Red team won. Come on up, red team. And they're like, yeah! And they walk away with carrots. <laughs> and then, everybody else, come on up. Yeah! And they walk with the same carrots. But they love it. So, that's closing and snack. Um, at 7.30, we say, peace out. And the parents start to grab their kids. Now, some parents linger. 
So we still have some kids in the gym. And again, this was another mayhem time. Um, the poor game team has been on and then on and then on and then on. I'm not going to ask them to come up with games, but I am going to ask the listeners who were really only on for 30 minutes to manage some type of controlled play with the children until they leave. And it's just going to be a trickling out population. So it's not going to have to be until the war. And when people leave, one team falls down someday. Right? <laughs> so do something. I'm going to ask the listeners to, to somewhat help with that. Because the leaders and the directors are back up in their classrooms cleaning up. Okay? Packing up these totes again and bringing them back down to the locker. Um, and then um, when kids are gone and rooms are clean and stuff is back in the locker, we can all go home. Um, typically, that's sometime just before 8 o'clock, 7.45, 7.50, something like that. Um, we like, I, I like to have a little prayer time and a little debriefing, especially early on in the season when we're all learning our roles, right? Um, and make sure we all know what happened um, and fix anything that came up and then I will dismiss you, and we will all fall into bed. So um, that's the way this works. Five-ish to eight-ish, not five-ish, five. Forget the ish, five um, to eight-ish. That will be, that's, that's when this happens, okay? So the, the jobs again, listener, you, you're an adult in the room assisting as needed, but your responsibilities are with your tribe for handle time, okay? Leader, you will also have a tribe for handbook time, but you will take turns teaching council time. Okay? Director, you you do not have a tribe. Um, your job is to you are the you are the overarching administrator of everything that happens in the room. If the director would also like to teach, that's fine. The, the director can rotate if they would like to. Um, but I'm not gonna say that that's part of their job because they're gonna be problem solving in the room as the night goes on. And I don't want them to be tied to something that they don't necessarily have the mental space to do, okay? Um, so there have been directors that take a tribe, there have been directors that take turns leading, but the director needs to be able to assign themselves that or step out of that as the night demands, okay? Um, I float around and put out fires. I bless people, I hug kids, I give high fives, I smile, I blow in and out of every room. And, and that's what I do, okay? So that is, that's the teams. And then game team, Trevor is heading that up. Um, worship, I have Michelle. Um, and then two people emailed me that can't be here and they for sure are gonna be these roles. I know you all have in your mind what you signed up for and I, I have it written down, but I didn't want to dictate in case sometime between the last con conversation we had and today, Maybe the Holy Spirit is doing something else with your heart, and you're like, you know, I signed up for X, but I think I could do Y. Or I signed up for Y, and I need to go to X, or whatever it is. Okay, so I want to, um, we have 15 minutes left. I'm going to field questions about Awana in general and what we do. And then I'm going to let you grab a marker and assign yourself to where you would like to be. Okay? Uh, because I think that uh, I don't want to force anybody. Um, I, I will be honest with you, I had a Cubbies director and a TNT director, and in the last two weeks, both of them, for legitimate personal reasons, have bowed out. So I need leadership. Um, Jesus will provide. And I'll just say that. I'm not going to force anybody into it. Um, Jesus will provide. These are his kids. He loves them enough to raise up the workers. So, there you go. Um, so, these are the roles. What questions do you have? Yes, dear. question about... Um those little words at the end of the night for like puppies or sparks, do you assign it then or do you get it at the end of the year? It happens at the end of handbook time. So handbook is a 30 minute block of time. You don't need 30 minutes with your tribe for um, checking verses. Um, you need probably 20 minutes with your tribe for checking verses. Because if there's too much sitting and just um, quoting right there, Number one, they're going to lose focus. Number two, they may think that that's when they memorize. No, this is homework, right? And we want to instill in them that uh, that scripture memorization is not something that happens in for 20 minutes, 30 minutes on a Sunday. Scripture memorization is a daily ongoing process. We want to build a devotional life into these kids, right?
So they should come to you and you should spend your 20 minutes hearing what they have learned. And coaching where there are errors and giving them some chance to fix their errors. Um, and there may be kids who a devotional life is so foreign to them, it's never been modeled, it's not their parents, it's not their culture. And, and it's okay to tell them, take these next 15 minutes and learn this little sentence. That's okay. But that's a, that's a crutch, that's a scaffold. We want to get them beyond that, right? So the first 15, 20 minutes of handbook time is actually getting the things signed off. And then the last 10 minutes of handbook time is, is as you, the listener, with your little tribe, who, who earned what award? You go back to the box that has all the awards in it, and you gather your little jewels, and you come back and you celebrate. Woo! Good job for you! You a jewel! High five! Good job! Da, 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 da. Right? Okay. And you you celebrate the moment with your tribe. And when the big things are crossed, there are there are small awards, and then there are like rank awards. And when the rank ones happen, you need to let the whole room know, right? And so and so got to this, and then everybody needs to cheer. Right, so that's handled. Yeah. So what, in um, Sparks, I remember I would kind of help out last year just a little bit, but they were writing down, okay, all the red jewel people got the, you know, and they would list them on the board. Yeah. And we would all kind of clap. Is that okay? Totally fine. Okay. You can you can develop your own ways of expressing the what, what happens in the room. That's fine. That's okay. fine. Yeah, but, but you need to do it there in the moment. It's not something that, um, when Tegan was doing it a couple of years ago before I was helping, uh, she would, Say I got this, and you're like, "Where is it?" Well, they're gonna give it to me next week. Baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that happened to Ellie too. Oh <laughs> no! Like they got it. We need to woo, right? Kids don't. Kids don't do, do delay gratification, right? Oh, no, no. So yeah, give it to them then at the moment. Yeah. Celebrate it. What are the questions that happened? Yes. So I never did a one up. Uh -huh. the same sign off. Is that just memory verses, or what are we saying? So the books, I put some books on the tables. You can see at the end of a section, a lesson, at the bottom left-hand corner, uh, bottom right-hand corner of the page, there's a place for a leader to sign off on the page and say, this page is done. So it's reading the content. It's going to the next thing, plus the next thing. Yeah, they have to be able to talk to you about the, yeah, if there's like a story, or there is a something like that that just asks me, hey, what happened over here? Oh, and so see if see if they figured it out. And then they have to be able to say perfectly all the things that are in bold. So that's the, the scripture verses. Were you just saying that uh, that type of stuff? Yeah, so so on that page where it says say it, right here. Perfect. Right. And then this is just for them to like put these words when they say it or Oh, well, I'm Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You are. Yeah, that's fine. So that's the script of verses. Okay. What are the questions? Do you have them? Well, you're saying some kids want to memorize more than one. Yeah. Totally. So that's okay. That's absolutely fine. Um, that's a good question. So pacing for cubbies, we, we work on the same verse every, with the same verse, all the group, because one verse is enough. For that age group, right? Um, for for Sparks and for TNT, they are allowed to go at their own pace. So we have some some kids who struggle to memorize perfectly. Not everybody's brain works with rote um, recitation. That's hard for some people. But even though it's hard, it's valuable. And in life, you want to know what the scripture actually says, not what you remembered it part of sort of meant. Right? right? Yeah. So some kids will go slow. Some kids will have one verse a week. And we need to celebrate the one verse yeah. a week. Right? And then there are these Ezekiel fours. I'm just going to say your child is astounding. He, he is hyper speed, full bore into this. And it blesses my heart to see a kid who loves scripture and parents that are on board. Because I know that's your work too. So amazing. Um, Ezekiel 4, in the three weeks that he was in, three weeks, three years that he was in Sparks, he finished all three books in two years. Okay? Um, some kids take three years to finish a book. Okay? And that's just okay. We're okay with that. I mean, that's not the goal. But, um, and if a kid finishes a book before the year is over, 
There are review activities. There are extra credit activities. There are things to keep them in that book. But honestly, some kids, like, they will do the review and the extra credit, and they'll be done, 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 done in March. And we've got two more months. Um, on a on a case-by-case -case basis, it's okay to let them into the next book early because if the Holy Spirit is just pouring Scripture into their hearts, I'm not going to be the spigot that says, no, not, not enough. That's too much That's too much Scripture. So, no. Um, so come to me and say, so-and-so is done with their book. And then I'll say, give them the review. And then come to me a couple weeks later and say, and they're done with the review. Okay, give them the extra credit. And you'll come to me a couple weeks later and be like, yeah, extra credit's done. And then we'll decide what to do with the kid and what time it is in the year. Some kids will lend into the next book early, and that's okay. Ezekiel was done with all three books um, in his first two years of Sparks, and then, uh, but he hadn't done the extra credit. So last year in Sparks, he did the extra credit for book one, two, and three. Kids just, he, he absorbs the Bible, and it's a blessing. So there are those kids, and then there are kids who are in their third year of TNT and are still in book one. We need to help those kids, but it's still okay. It's getting in. It's getting in. What other questions do you have? Okay. Do you understand the basic structure? Do you understand the jobs? Okay. There's still 15 minutes left in this service before I have to be taking sign-ups. Um, I'm going to let you uncoerced. Put yourself somewhere. Um, I only drew two listener lines, two listener lines, and three listener lines. Um, we can draw more lines, but let's try to upfill as well, right? Yes, ma'am. So, if uh, my son is in TNT, am I forbidden to be in the same group as him? I think it would be. Mm, you know your relationship with your child, but I think it would be better if you were elsewhere. Yeah, but it's not like forbidden. Like, say, if you were short in that area. Right. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but I would prefer that parents aren't in the same room with. Me too. <laughs> okay. okay. So, God bless you. Sign up for something. Okay. So, and one more question. Yes. One um, more answer. So, I'm if people. I'm in other ministries at night, yeah, and I just fill in when people are sick, do you want me to sign it up? Over there? Uh, no. I should have that somewhere here. There, there is a sub tool. Yeah. So there you go. And I, that's you. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and put you here. There you go. L L E. Yep. We just talked about how to say your name. Oh, there you go. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to.